Why hello and welcome back to my first playthrough with Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. In the previous episode we analysed Ed's second hypnosis session. So we analysed the memories that he had been suppressing and it turns out his childhood was far from happy. Which has definitely had some repercussions going into his adult life. We had a quick chat with his editor Robert and found out a little bit more through him but overall was still a little bit in the dark as to what exactly we are dealing with. We have paused it at the point of picking up with Sheriff Nick Reyes's saga shall we say <laughs> uh, so we're going to continue from where we left off and see what the outcome is with his discovery last we saw him you, you should have told me first adam Yes, so we informed the coroner and not Adam of his uncle's death. I'm going to go with following protocol. You know the protocol. It's there for a reason. And no one is above it. I should have heard it from you, not by accident. Mm, I should have picked that top option. Kid. We have to find my aunt. Oh, we will. We're going to find your aunt alive. Um, let's go with the bottom option. We're going to find your aunt alive and the murderer. We'll find your aunt and the son of a bitch that killed your uncle. She's alive, right? She's alive. Harley is getting ready for the biggest search party you've ever seen, Adam. We've already got over a hundred volunteers coming. We'll find her. I mean... All right? I'm not an expert in law and order but isn't it usually the wife that would be the first suspect <laughs> though I appreciate that wouldn't be the most reinforcing thing to tell Adam at this time sure you don't want me to go down there I've done this before just pay attention give me more or less slack when I tell you to okay hmm well, this couldn't possibly go wrong. You think there's a connection, don't you? Between my uncle and Ed Miller. According to the forensics, your uncle died... Was murdered. A little over a week ago. Oh, so my assumption was right. I guessed around a week. He'd been planning to go fishing with Miller the same day he tried to kill himself. Let's go with that. We know that's Nine a fact. Nine days ago today, Miller tried to kill himself. We are talking pretty much the same day that Miller's car went over that cliff. And then Jackass says he was riding with a girl and a baby that no one's ever heard of. But... Fireman went down and didn't find anything. We don't put out fires, and they don't find things. All right, go for it. Okay, this is all starting to get very interesting. Oh, I am surprised that the vehicle wreckage is still down there. I'm on the ground. I'm on clipping, all right? Roger that, boss. I skipped the monthly dinner, Nick. Mm, no reason. I just 
didn't feel like it. Well, that's gonna I don't know eat away at him. Just didn't, you know. I just stayed home, watched some stupid show with Marcello. Maybe if I had gone. Let's just reassure him it's not his fault. Or you couldn't have known. You couldn't have known. How could you have known? You missed a family dinner. That's it. The real culprit is out there. Now we're going to find him. Okay? Sure we will. I get why you feel that way. And I have no idea how one gets rid of that feeling. However much time goes by, all I know is that it's pointless. It's like a busted pipe. The more you force it... Nick, are you getting poetic on me now? <laughs> if that doesn't make you smile, <laughs> I don't know what will. Right, let's see what's what down here then. So one would have to assume that this is Maddie, Ed's mum, and Reyes was the officer that found them. It would also stand to good reason that if Maddie chose to go ahead with the pregnancy, that this could have very well been during her pregnancy. Nick. Nick, you there? I just... Just what I said in the car. I'm sorry. Adam. How are you getting... Poetic with me. You asshole. There we go. So we're able to smooth it over with Adam. That's good. So we've got a gas tank to examine. I'm just going to quickly take a peek on the other side, see if there's anything there. Right, let's examine the gas tank. Oh, and the car door. We'll do the tank first. So good luck getting that open without making a racket. It's 
So Ed was drinking at the wheel, it would seem. I mean, that would be the first thing I would examine. Son of a bitch. And then we've also got the dashboard to look at, or the glove compartment, sorry. Hmm. It's not looking good for Ed right now, huh? Adam, tell Harley to call forensics. We've got work for them. Well, this is really going to land him in some hot water, huh? Ed, I mean. Right, no. so... It's too early, John. I don't... Do you even listen to me when I talk? Oh, so we're in another flashback memory Next of Ed. Week. Here we go again. Next week. There's no traffic now. You know how it gets. If we don't leave before sunrise, we don't get there until lunchtime. I mean, honestly. <sighs> Next week, we should leave at a reasonable time. The kids need their rest. You're saying that as if I didn't care. Kids, I plural. So there is a I'm baby. She did have Are the baby. Are you saying I don't care? No one said that, John. No okay. one. Okay. Or did she? You're not going to win this fight. Mm -mm. It's over. we've got our spy crew we'll go with the green play with the green one So I'm hoping and assuming John is able to get Ed and the baby out of the car. Or just or or maybe just Ed. <gasps> oh no. Oh well that's awful. Again, we can only really take Ed's word for it. This is all from his perspective. Is that what actually happened? Yay or nay? I have my doubts. Why am I telling you this? We're going to go with it's important. It's important, Ed. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> It's not just the money, is it? You shrinks are all addicted to other people's pain. You... You get off on it. Tell me about your father. About his... See, case in point. Hmm. Please. This is the trouble. The memories are becoming more and more painful, so he's finding more and more excuses to try and avoid talking about them. So what actually happened, eh? Aunt Claire really loves you, huh? If she brought me all those books, I would have never left my room. 
let's ignore. What about the birthday cake she's making for you? Huh? Come on. Let's see if you remember the ingredients we have to buy. Okay. I'll say one, and then you say one. Baking powder. Eggs. Yes. Flour. Yes. Butter. Yes. Molasses. Yes. Hmm. So the difficulty I'm having now is we know that John is not this doting of a father. So how much of this is all in one's mind and how much of it is real? I do not know what to believe anymore. We are going to run to him. That's what we chose in the beginning, so we'll choose that again. <laughs> so, going back to what I said in previous episodes, one of the main plot threads of Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, the movie is... I suppose this is spoiler territory. Well... Which I will tell you in a minute. I've held up my side of the bargain. Somebody must be exhausted from all that listening. <laughs> so, veggie sandwich before going back home? Hmm? Oh. You know... Um, uh, you do know that what you told me is not how things really happened, right? <laughs> Addicts. <sighs> that wasn't enough for you? You need a double dose of tragedy? <laughs> Look at the spiral, please. Hmm. Um, you got me out of the hospital. You're a friend of Robert's. But, mm -mm 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 -mm. you just used up the last favor I owe you. So, next ones. Sandwich. Car. Road. Bed. Got it. <laughs> Let's play hardball. I'm not going anywhere until you're better. You're nine. Your parents woke you up in the middle of the night to go on a trip. You fell asleep in the car. Your sister is next to you. Okay, she was a sister. Okay. You hear your parents, and gradually you wake up. I'm. I. I am. No! You have several plastic figurines. Can you describe them to me? There. They are from... Please, no. No. Wake up, Eddie. No. Oh, oh dear. Wake up. No. Wake up. No. Wake up. Well, here we go. So, as I was saying, based on the movie, it's entirely possible that John, while we think he jumped off the bridge, 
perhaps he didn't. And that's all I'll say. Oh, no, damn it. I can't do this anymore, John. I can't. Do you even listen to me when I talk? Next week. What did you promise me, hmm? Next week. For richer, for poorer, in sickness, and in health. Until death fucking do us part! God damn it! Next week, I'm taking the kids, and I'm leaving. The sooner you get to be in with your him, head. am I right? See, that's mistake Again, number one. Please. If you're going to abruptly Jeez. leave your partner, you don't tell Bob. them a week ahead. You seriously think I didn't know about that? That I don't know who he is? There's nobody, John. Nobody. You're not gonna tear this family apart. Mm -mm. So, just a quick bit of theorizing here. Judging by the reaction Sheriff Reyes had to one, the news that his friends had a stillborn child, you know, lost a child, combined with his reaction to what he found in the vehicle, which would have been Maddie and the little girl, the, the small Eddie's younger sister, and the conversation we've just had there with John, one would assume that Maddie was perhaps seeing Nick on the side and that maybe, just maybe, the baby was his. But that's me just grasping at straws there. Let's uh, see it play out. I'll tear it apart first. <laughs> right, so John really is on a destructive streak. Again, he's quicker to bring harm to those around him than onto himself. Ah, Jenny. What a lovely little name. Let's see. Let's just ask how old she is. When was Jenny born? Mom says she'll be a hundred days old next week. Wow, that's a lot, huh? And then we can see... Ooh, let's have a look at the moon. Do you go from San Francisco to Cerro Lake every weekend? Mainly in the summertime. The house in San Francisco is really small. And Dad says his imagination doesn't fit inside, so it ends up jumping out the window. Especially now that they've turned his office into Jenny's room, right? Hmm. Mm-hmm. And then one more objective, and that is Mum. Before, you said your mother winked at you at that point, but actually she only looked at you. Why? She would do that sometimes. Why did you forget the last look she gave you, Ed? I don't know. It's not my fault. I didn't do anything. Okay, so... That's 100%. Let's analyze the void. One would perhaps assume he pushes the car. Oh gosh, yep, here he goes, he's pushing the car. Oh. 
further solidifying that John held some sort of resentment towards the child, as well as Maddie. Jenny's crying. Is she okay? She is not okay. You know she's not, Eddie. She's asleep, isn't she? <laughs> you know she's not, Eddie. I think at this point we just have to play cruel to be kind and force Eddie t to acknowledge harsh realities of what is going on here. Did you hurt your collarbone? The doctor will say the seatbelt saved me, but it burnt my skin. Right, and I feel like there should be a way of examining John, but there isn't. Let's move on to another segment. Will your father keep drinking from that day until his last? Aunt Claire won't let him. Aunt Claire? She'll come from San Bernardino to take care of us. Well, where was Aunt Claire when all this shit was going on? Hmm? Do you still have that figurine? I'll lose it. Right, so I am missing one more secondary. Observation. So let's try and find it. Examine the surroundings. Could be something that's inside the car. Aha. Uh -huh. Before, you told me a blowout caused the accident. Yep. But. You didn't hear anything, did you, Ed? That's what Dad will tell the police. Okay, so that is 100%. <laughs> uh, time to end the hypnosis. it's time we tell him the truth he's clearly feeling distressed so he's got to acknowledge that those feelings are coming from somewhere but in the same breath I don't feel as though we've learnt all the facts let's go with nothing I can tell you I yet I can't tell you yet tick tock doctor Okay, Sheriff Reyes is here. I don't think he's in a particularly good mood. He's in rehab. You can't go in there. What did you do, Miller? Sheriff Reyes. That's me. What the hell did you do? Dr. Lomas? That's me. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. I uh, should... Um, I have to talk to Mr. Miller. I mean, Claire did tell you he was in session. You wait outside just a minute. 
I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but... You're the one that's going to have to wait outside. Um, I have to ask you to leave. You have to wait outside. Those are practically the same answer. He's my patient and I'm not leaving. These are all pretty weak responses to a man of the law. Let's ask him to wait outside. Mr. Miller is my patient and we're in the middle of a session. You're the one who's going to wait outside. I understand your predicament, Doctor, but it's serious. I wouldn't be asking you if... I understand your predicament as well, Sheriff. You barged into my patient's room without permission. What's so urgent? I think if we get on the wrong side of Nick, that will not bode well either, so we need to try and play this cool. Um, we won't report him. Do you want a warrant? Do you have a warrant? See, that just sounds like fighting talk. Let's go with he's in bed, he's not moving. As you know, Mr. Miller is unable to walk. I don't think he'll run off while you're waiting. I know this might seem uh, irregular, but uh, if I could just... I don't care what it looks like, but you are going to have to wait outside the room. Doctor. Please. Dr. Lomas. I'll take care of this. Okay, a bit of cooperation. Let's... Well, maybe it's just as well we didn't tell him the truth, because that could... That could have minced up what he says to the sheriff. Thank you. I don't think the sheriff realizes what he's walking into here. <laughs> you don't like me. I don't like you. Let's get to the point. Okay, Miller. 27 years ago, on Brody Canyon Bridge, your family. No. No, no. No. And now the exact same thing happens. And I'm supposed to believe it? Let's see. Just would you have jumped off the bridge? Just results for the girl. How did you get to the bridge? I think we need to we need to establish if these people were even real. So let's just go with test results. I suppose you know they ran some tests when you got to the hospital. Huh. Enlighten me. What did they find? Alcohol. Yeah, right. Well, according to the truck driver who saved you, you reeked of booze. I hate the stuff. Can't even stand the smell. Mm, even an 18-year-old Durrell Special Reserve? Um, did... I do not recall there being any proof of antipsychotics or sedatives. Let's go with the sedatives. Sedatives. <laughs> Do I look like someone who has trouble sleeping? I've been in bed for a week. Antipsychotics. <sighs> I doubt that. Does Advil count? Let's try and establish. We searched the car. No sign of a certain Fay or a baby. <laughs> the police academy isn't what it used to be. Convince me. I'm sure you have their pictures on your phone, right? It was the first freaking thing I checked when I woke up. All deleted. Sure. Describe her then. Okay. Height? Uh. Average? Five foot eight? Ethnicity? Caucasian. Very fair skin. Blonde, brunette. Practically silver. Shoulder length. Straight. 
I go green. Light. Green. So, I knew that one. Um. Okay, well, that's so, how he got to the bridge. How did it all happen? Here we go again. I was sleeping. Faye woke me up. Jenny had a slight fever. Jenny? My daughter. Jenny. We got dressed to take her to the hospital. We got in the car, and that's it. That's it. I told you, I don't remember. Amnesia. Mm. Comes in handy sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> it takes a lot of guts to commit suicide. Or maybe it, it takes the opposite. If that truck driver hadn't showed up, would you have done it? No, I was getting down from the railing when he knocked me on the ground. Had you met him before? The, the truck driver? What are you suggesting? <laughs> <sighs> you had me confused for a minute there, Sheriff. I thought... How is this guy who's been out to get me since forever the only one who seems to believe Faye exists? <laughs> but I get it now. I stopped counting the amount of times you pulled me over for a breath test. Now you finally have an excuse. You want to lock me up for a damn DUI? And if you can also peg involuntary manslaughter on me, all hail the sheriff. He really is quite the storyteller. Uh, let's go with involuntary. Involuntary manslaughter. You're gonna have a hard time proving anything else. We'll see about that. You are good friends with the Franklins, aren't you? What? What have they got to do with any of this? Let's see. Fishing with Samuel. Let's Do you and Samuel Franklin go fishing a lot? Is that a crime? Huh. You barely have any friends. Him? I'd say he had, what? None? I don't know. A few years ago, I went for a walk in the woods. He was fishing. I spooked his fish. He ended up showing me the ropes. We go down to the river every once in a while now. Or he just stops by when he's bored. Just your average boy meets old guy story. Um, we won't... We'll ask about the gun permit last, I think. How do you get along with Esther Franklin? We were close when I was a kid, but... That ended when I went to San Bernardino with Aunt Claire. When I came back about nine years ago, we started to reconnect. She still cares about me. For some reason. Do you have a gun permit? I'm a writer. The pennant is mightier than the sword and all that crap. Then, what's that Glock 19 doing in your glove compartment, huh? What are you talking about? Are you messing with the little sanity I have left? <sighs> all right. That's it. What's going on? Mr. Franklin is missing. Samuel Franklin died from a bullet to the head. The same day, you almost killed yourself. Mic drop. No. No. Well, I don't think he's going to be getting no. out of bed anytime soon. I don't know the law all that well, as I've said previously, but surely they could take fingerprints from him so long as they believe him to be a suspect. Ooh, get Miller's fingerprints unofficially. Right, I'm guessing that's not okay then. Right, let's go get some talcum powder from the bathroom. Oh, pills. Looks like he wasn't lying about this. Ibuprofen. I mean... What's the big deal with ibuprofen? Right. 
right. I think I'll leave it there f briefly. Um, because we're just we're running up the time now. This is all getting quite intense. It's, I think it's coming to a head. So hopefully we will get some answers post haste. To recap, we've done our third hypnosis session. We have found that Ed's father, John, may have seemingly killed himself, though that is debatable. But John is indeed responsible for the murder of his wife, Maddie, and their daughter, Jenny. Well, at least Maddie's daughter, Jenny. The rest is yet to be determined. So hopefully we'll find out more in the next episode. Be sure to like this one if you enjoyed and hopefully I'll see you again for more.